Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be working on number of submatrices to sum to a target. And in the problem, you're given a matrix and a target and return the number of non-empty submatrices that sub to the target. Submatrix has x, y, or these four coordinates, and basically they tell you that for two submatrices, as long as one of these values is different, that means it's fine to use both of those. So you have like a top left corner, top right corner, bottom left corner, bottom right corner. So in this example here, for target equals zero, there are four matrices. So there's this matrix, this matrix, this matrix, and this matrix. And these examples aren't the best. So like this stuff has something too, but it's not, it's, it's kind of hard to see why. And this is also, I mean, this one is kind of easy. It's just a matrix of one item and you're looking for zero. So there's nothing there. So to solve this problem, you need to have done another problem before, and it's called subarray sum equals K. And this is basically like the harder version of this problem. So definitely if you haven't done that, I'll link it in the description. Start with that because if you haven't done that, um, you pretty much can't do this one. And if you have done that one, I will briefly go over the solution. If you don't want to do it, I'll briefly go over it. So essentially here you're asked, to return the number of subarrays in an array that the sum equals k. Kind of like the same thing here, except now this is one dimensional instead of two dimensional. So for example, one subarray, let's take a look, would be like this, right? This sum equals three. Let's see if we can find any others. Like this would be one, this would be one, and so on. So one way you could do this is you could actually just take every single possible subarray and get the sum. So you could say like, okay, let me take every subarray that starts with negative two, so I'll take like negative two, is that equal to negative three? No, let me add another element, is that equal to it? Let me add another element, let me add another element and so on, right? So notice how for all these you're doing your, well actually you're not really doing repeated work but this will be an n squared solution because if you start at negative two to go to the end is n, then you will start at one to go to the end is n and so on and so on and so on. So this is n squared. So we wanna be able to do this in order n in order to do the other problem. And the way to do this is basically to recognize that if you want to look for a subarray of sum three, you can actually just use prefix sums and store cumulative sums. And anytime you get to the same number by subtracting something, that means that subarray in the middle is gonna be equal to that. So it's kind of confusing, but let me kind of explain what I mean. So let's actually draw out a prefix sum here. And Okay, so our base case for an array with zero elements, and let's just one index this to make it easier. So this is gonna be index one, index two, index three, index four, index five, index six, index seven. So we're gonna say the base case of an array with zero elements will have a sum zero. Then let's just do a prefix sum for the rest. So for the first element, the sum is just negative two. Then for the second element, it's gonna be the previous sum plus the element. So it's gonna be negative two plus one, which is negative one then negative one plus two, which is one, one minus two, which is negative one, negative one plus five, which is four, four plus negative two, which is two, and, th and three here, and we can get rid of this. So this prefix sum basically gives us, um, if you aren't familiar with prefix sums, definitely it would start looking, like look that up before you do any of these, because um, definitely gonna be like impossible for you to do that. But essentially a prefix sum just tells you the sum of all the elements up and including to an index. So if this is one indexed, this number is gonna be the sum of all of this whole like subarray. And we can quickly double check. So if we do like this, this will be zero, one, negative one plus five, it'll be four. So now what we can do is we can basically just go through every index and maintain a count. So we have this prefix sum, we can go through every index and maintain a count. And we are essentially looking for subarrays equal to three. So when we are on some, some array with some prefix sum, let's say we're on array with this prefix sum, we're gonna be looking for an array with a prefix sum of this minus three. And if we find that, like we did find it here, that means that this section has to be equal to three, right? So let, let me kind of explain what I mean by that. So let's say we start over here, right? So, and like I said, we're gonna, so let's maintain, like now that we have this prefix sum, we need one more thing. I think maybe you can use this, you, you can, because you don't you don't actually really care for what index, so you can technically do this in, in one data structure, but I'm just gonna have it separate. 
So let's have this prefix sum and let's actually walk through the prefix sums now instead of walking through the array. So let's walk through the prefix sums and let's maintain a count of all these things. So, and we're gonna have a dictionary for that. So like I said, the default case is gonna be zero with a count of one. So let's walk through this one. So here we have a negative two prefix sum. So we are basically looking for a prefix sum before this number of negative two minus three. Do we have that? That means we need to get negative five. We don't have that, so we keep going. And, and we're gonna mark this with a count. So we'll say negative two has a count of one. Like I said, you can probably do this in one data structure, but you can do this separately as well. Okay, so now here we are looking for negative one minus three, which is negative four. Do we have a negative four in here? No, we don't. So we're gonna mark this as well. Now we have a one, so we are looking for a negative two. So we do have a negative two. And the reason we're looking for a negative two is because the sum of every element up until here is one. So if we find a negative two previously, which we have, and right, and, and we have a dictionary, we don't really care where it is, we just care how many there are. So for every negative two, like let's say here, that means the sum of every element up until here is negative two, and the difference here is three. So if the difference here is three, that means all of the elements in between these two things are equal to three. And if we actually take a look, so here it is right here, right? This like one and two. So the, the elements in between these are these two elements here, right? So you include the one on the right, you don't include the one on the left. So these two elements are equal to three. So that's kind of the idea is, we can write this as well. So for a given sum, every time we find sum minus k, an array can be formed between those two locations with some k, right? So we, we have a sum that we're currently on, we look for sum minus k, and wherever those are, for every single one of those like two combinations, right? So let's say there's one here, like we're here, and we find like five negative twos, that means there's five different subarrays that will give us k equals three, and they're all gonna be unique, right? Because every single, like all of these are at unique locations. So I hope you can see that this is why you can, like you can find this quickly, right? So you can do this in order and time, you can compute a prefix sum. You can probably do this in um, like one pass instead of having a, a prefix sum and a dictionary, but for our matrix, we'll use a prefix sum because there's like more dimensions and stuff. And it's, I don't know if you can do it in one pass, probably not. So yeah. So essentially we have one, we have one negative two. So we're going to have one subarray and we found it right here. So let's keep going and we're going to store this, this one as well, right? So we're going to store this value. We have one of them. So let's keep going. So we're going to go to the four and we're going to say, okay, now the value we're looking for is negative four. We don't have it. So this is negative one. Let's store another one of those. And then for the five, we're looking for one and we do have one. So like I said, it doesn't really matter where the one is. It just matters where the count, but there is a one. So that means that every element from here, not including this element. So this section here should add up to three. So let's take a look four and five and indeed they do. So this is another subarray that we found. So this is two now. And then we store, do we have any more ones? No, we don't. We just have this one. Now we store four with a count of one. So that's why I said the index doesn't really matter. It's more just like the count of every of every prefix sum that you have. Okay, so for here, we're looking for negative one. We have two of them. So once again, to quickly demonstrate, so there's one here. That means this five and six should have a count of three. So let's take a look, five and six. Indeed, that is true. So we have another one here. And also, we have another negative one over here. Like I said, the location doesn't matter. You can just quickly count how many negative ones you have. So if you have two of them, you will get two subarrays. So this subarray here, right? Not including this number, everything past it should give us um, three as well. So let's take a look. So three, four, five, six, this right here. And that does indeed give us three as well, right? So we get zero plus three. So that's another one. Then we store the value that we saw. So two, we don't have it yet. So we'll have value one. Finally, we go to the last one and we look for zero. We do have a zero, there's one of them. That's why you have to include the empty array. 
And so that means that zero is the empty array, which means this whole thing adds up to three. And let's just double check that really quick. So we get um, zero here, negative one, four, um, and then minus one. So we get three. Okay, so that is indeed correct. So this whole array does sum up to three, so we get one more. So there are five arrays. And that's basically how you do this problem. So you can do this problem in order and using prefix sums, you're basically just looking how many times did I find my current sum minus the target. Okay, so that's how you do that. Now we're gonna apply this to this matrix. And so let's get rid of all of this. So let's say we have this matrix right here, right? Or let's just say we'll, we'll just make a three by three. Let's say we have a three by three. There we go. And let's use those exact values as in the other problems. So zero, one, 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 zero, zero. So you can build a prefix sum um, for, for a two by two matrix, kind of like a one by one, but basically let's just say we pick a cell and we're gonna, we're gonna go this way and this way. So for a cell, let's say this cell, and I think there is a problem like this where you're trying to figure out like the sum of a square and O of one or something. But let's say for this cell, the prefix sum for this cell means it's going to be this whole thing, right? So for, for whatever cell, it's going to be the whole matrix where, th where this cell is the bottom right hand corner of this matrix. And we're going to be computing to the right and down. So if we're computing this, we'll have this computed, this computed, this computed, this computed, this computed. So how would we do that, right? Well, it's actually just an overlapping problem. So what you can do is if you're trying to get this, there's a couple of matrices that you need, right? So basically, if you take this cell, which we already have computed, so this matrix here, and so the one above it and the one to the left of it, so that's going to be this matrix here, you add those together, right? You, you have these two values computed because you're you're going down and to the right. You have these two values computed. Notice there's, there's an overlapping region. So this region is overlapping. So you basically do this plus this, minus this overlapping region and the we can actually write down a formula for this so let's say we're trying to get row and column it will be row minus one and column plus row and column minus one so it's actually just uh maybe write it like this these are the these are the places we're we're looking for and i'll kind of show that in the picture so it's going to be row minus one and column and this is going to be row and column minus one minus row minus one and column minus one plus the actual cell value in the matrix. So matrix of row and column. So just to quickly go back. So let's say we're computing this value. So row minus one and column will be the prefix sum over here. Uh, yeah, it'll be over here. So if we're computing this cell, th th that'll be this prefix sum, this whole thing, right? Because it's starting at this cell where this is the bottom right. Now, row and column minus one will be um, everything from here, right? It's to the left of it. So it'll be this whole thing. And then finally, both of these minus one will be, uh, we ran out of colors. Let's just use this color. Both of these minus one will be the cell to the left and up of it. So we're adding this blue and this brown right? The cell above this whole thing, the cell to the left, this whole thing. And then we're getting rid of this area here. So this pink is this thing right here. So we're getting rid of this because this is calculated twice. And then finally, we need to add the actual value from the matrix for this. So that's what we're going to do there. So that's how you get the prefix sum. And let's quickly walk through um, doing this for this matrix. And also, um, you, you can handle this in a few ways, but essentially to get the prefix sum for some index, you need to do you need to do like, 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 let's say the, let's say these rows and columns were out of bounds, right? Like let's say we're computing this. So actually, um, row minus one would be out of bounds. So you can either make this, you can either have like a zero index for both of these that just all zeros, or you can just check for these things. So if we're computing this, if this is out of bounds, that means this is zero because this sub matrix, it doesn't exist. So this is zero. Similarly, if we're getting like this and we're trying to get this sub matrix, this will be zero. So that's what we're going to do there. So let's quickly um, make a prefix sum matrix. Like if for this matrix, let's make a prefix sum matrix and show how you would add this up. So let's make a three by three. 
and let's make it a similar size ideally or close close enough okay so remember we're gonna start here and we're gonna go um right and down down or right like it doesn't matter which way but yeah so we're gonna go yeah we're gonna go right and then we're gonna go down a row and then go this way and this way this way okay so for the first cell there is nothing to the left or any of these like right this thing is zero this thing is zero this thing is zero so we basically just copy in whatever is in the matrix which is just zero then for this cell the thing above it is zero the thing to the left of it is zero and the thing here is out of bounds so we're just going to write in the value here which is one then for this cell the thing above it is zero the thing to the left of it is this value over here which is one and then the thing over here is out of bounds so you will just get one then down here for this cell the thing above it is zero the thing to the left of it is zero and the thing over here is zero and its value is one so we're just going to put in a one remember these four things then for here, the thing above it is one, to the left is one, to up and to the left is zero, and its value is one, so it's gonna be one plus one plus one, which will be three. Then the thing here, so the one above is one, the one to the left is three, the one up and to the left is, uh, yeah, I think I did that right, yeah, 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 okay. So the one up and to the left is one, so remember it's gonna be this, plus this, minus this, because this is the overlapping region, plus the value itself. So it's going to be 4 minus 1, which will be 3, plus the value itself, which will be 4. And let's just make sure it's correct. That's this matrix that is correct. Okay, now here, the value above is 1. The value to the left is 0. We're out of bounds. Up here is 0, and uh, its value is 0. So it's just going to be this value here. So it'll be 1. Then here, the value above is 1, or 3. The value to the left is 1. This is 1, and this is 1, so it's going to be 3 plus 1 minus 1, so 3, plus the value in the actual matrix, so it's going to be 4. And finally, for the last one, so we have 4 plus 4 minus 3, so that'll be 5, plus the value itself, so it'll be 5. Okay. So now we have this prefix on matrix. Hopefully you can tell this one cell basically represents a submatrix where this, this corner is the bottom right corner. So for example, for this square, this represents this matrix here, right? This square represents that. So hopefully I did the count right there. Now, essentially, now that we get this, now we can actually figure out, like we, we can maintain counts. So let's try to figure out, like remember for our K, um, K array, we didn't, we didn't keep, we didn't start making new arrays at every column, right? We just went through one array and maintained its counts of values. So that's the same thing we're gonna do here. We're not gonna, st we're not gonna like make a new array at every column. We will just pick a row range and then we will build on it, storing a prefix sum. So for every sub matrix, like if we just focus on what's the starting and bot, like what's the top and bottom row of a matrix for every sub matrix, what can it be, right? So the top row can be in this in this case is can be zero through two, and given the top row, the bottom row can be anywhere from top to two, right? So for example, let's say we want to get a matrix of just this cell. So that means the top row will be zero, and the bottom row will also be zero because if the top and the bottom row are equal, that means it's a it's a one height matrix. But if the top row is zero, we can also say like the bottom row is two, right? Like this could be a matrix. So given the top row, the bottom row has to be any value from the top row to the very bottom. So we're gonna go through all of those combinations. So we're essentially gonna say, okay, for top row zero, we're gonna try this, we're gonna try this, and we're gonna try this. Then for top row one, we're gonna try this, we're gonna try this, and then for top row two, it can only be this. And we're going to build left to right using the columns, traversing kind of like we did that subarray K thing. So we're going to traverse the columns one by one, add up the sums, and then see how we've seen it before. So let's quickly do a dry run of this. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. So essentially, I just run through uh, top and bottom row. So for top row equals zero and bottom row equals zero. Let's start with that, right? So this, this very top thing. So we're going to make a dictionary kind of like what we did before. Right, we're gonna make a dictionary of the counts of every number. So let's say, uh, I forgot what we're looking for. So we're looking for, let's see, zero. Okay, so we're looking for zero, which is kind of like K in that problem. So target equals zero. So we're gonna have the base case of 
you know, if the whole thing is empty, that's going to be a count of one. And you want that because let's say your target is five and your current sum is five. Like let's say the sum of this was five. That means you're looking for zero and you wouldn't have a zero unless you made a zero for the empty array. So for this, we're going to make a dictionary of zero with a count of one and we're going to traverse here. Maybe I won't do all of it. I'll just do a couple. Okay. So we're going to traverse column one. So for, for this column, the sum is zero and we're looking for the sum minus the target. So zero minus zero, we're looking for zero. So do we have a zero? Yes, we do. So that means we get one to the result. And that makes sense, right? Because the sum of this matrix is zero and we're looking for that. So we have one in the result, so we'll have the result here. Then we go to the next column. Oh, and, and before we do that, remember we store we store the current sum. So now this zero has a sum of two. Then we go to the next column and we say, okay, it's a one, we're looking for a one. We don't have any ones. So we'll store a one with a count of one. Then we go to the next column and now the sum is one. Do we have any ones? Yes, we do. How many do we have? We have one. So that means we will add one to the result. And that makes sense, right? Because if the sum here is one, wherever this last one was, which happened to be here, the subarray between those has a, like the difference is a zero. That means the subarray between these two things has a sum of zero. And indeed it does, right? Like the, this element has a sum of zero. If we actually look here in the original problem. So we found two up here. Okay, so now we will switch this bottom row to be one. Whoops. We'll switch this bottom row to be one. And now essentially we're doing, instead of doing just this top matrix, we're going to be doing like these two and traversing all the way. And we're going to reset our dictionary because this is a completely new like count. So once again, for zero, we'll have a count of one. So for this, we have to like do the same thing. So how do we get, I guess that's the other thing is for a given, um, like, let's say we have these two rows. How do we actually get the prefix sum for like this column, let's say, right? So the prefix sum for this column is pretty easy. It's just going to be the prefix sum of the bottom location. So like, because this is the things we're looking for now, right? Matrices of length two that are here. Um, the prefix sum for this matrix is basically just gonna be this value minus the value up here, right? And I can show this easier if we had like a, let's say we're looking for this, but but instead of these two, we're looking for here, right? So that would be this value minus the value up here because this value will give us this whole matrix and the value up here will give us this whole matrix. So we're essentially taking this whole matrix and getting rid of everything above the range we need. And that will give us this part, which is actually what we want. Okay. So let's maybe walk through like the rest of this for this iteration. And then like, I think you, you kind of understand how you do for the rest of it. It's just like the same kind of thing. So for this, we're going to reset our dictionary and we're going to calculate our sums. So here we have a sum of one and there's nothing here. So we're going to do one minus zero right? Like this is exactly what we want. So we have a sum of one. We're looking for zero. So one minus zero, we don't have that. So we're going to store this sum of one. So we're going to say one equals zero. Then for this location, we have a sum of three. Remember, there's nothing up here. We're looking for zero. So we don't have that because it's going to be three minus zero. We don't have that. So three will be a sum of one. And then we have four. Four will be a sum of one. So we don't have any of these. So here we have nothing. So we're going to reset it again. Reset our hash map. And then we're going to go over here now. So for this, to get the prefix sum, it's just, it's going to be kind of like very similar, right? Like, let's say we're on this column. It's going to be this minus whatever's over here, which is just out of bounds. So it'll literally just be this value here. So let's do, quickly do this. So we have a value one. Do we, do we have any ones? No, we don't. So we're going to store it. So there. Now here we have a value four. Do we have any fours? No, we don't. So we're going to store it. And it's very easy, right? Because our target is zero. So it's just going to be like four minus zero, five minus zero, and so on. So we basically have to have this exact value before. And then five, we also don't have it. So none of these are good. So it's actually, I guess we can walk through the rest of it. So now that we now that we went through this like top, right? Now we're doing, uh, so we did top zero, bot one. We did top zero, bot two. Now we're essentially going to the next top value, which is top one. 
So for top one, bot can be one or two, right? Because we can have a one dimensional matrix like this or a two dimensional matrix like this. So let's walk through it. So for top one, bottom one, let's walk through it. So now we will be actually subtracting, right? Because when we have this region, it will be this minus this value here because we just want this bottom part. So let's walk through that. So we have one here minus zero. So it'll be a one. Do we have a one? No, we don't. So we're just gonna store a one with a count of one. Then for this, we have a four minus this thing here. So it's gonna be three. Do we have any threes? No, we don't. So we'll store three with a count of one. Then for this, it'll be five with a count of, or five minus one with a count of, or do we have any, sorry, it'll, five minus one should be four. Do we have any fours? No, we don't. So we're gonna store this. So we didn't, we didn't get anything here. Okay, so that, nothing there. Actually, I just noticed, um, so we were supposed to do top one, bot one. This is top one, bot two. So we, we did top one, bot two, so we can do this one as well that we forgot. So this will be top one, bot one. So we can do that as well. Same kind of idea, right? You just take whatever prefix you have minus the one above. So here we have one minus zero. So we don't have that, so we'll store it. Here we have three minus one, so two. We don't have it, we don't have it. So we'll store it here. We have three, don't have that either. So we'll store it. So here we also have nothing, which makes sense, right? You don't have any zeros here. So for anything here or here, you, you, for any of these matrices, you don't, you don't have only zeros. So that doesn't make sense why none of these is valid. Okay, finally, let's go through our last case where top is two. So if top is two, bottom has to be only two, right? There's only one thing here. So if the top row of our matrix is down here, the bottom row has to be down here as well. So that's the last one we have to look at. So let's look at it. So this is gonna be this one over here. So let's start by looking here. So remember, it's gonna be this prefix minus the one above it, because for this cell, for example, that's gonna be this matrix. It's actually gonna be this whole matrix but we just want this matrix here. So we have to get rid of this region here. So we will do this minus this. So we get one minus one, which is zero. Do we have that? Yes, we do. So we will add one to the result. So three, and we will add one to the count of zeros. So that is two. Then over here, we're gonna do four minus three, which is one. Do we have it? No, we don't. So we'll add one to the count there. And here we will do five minus four, which is one. And we do have that. So we will add one to the result and we will store another one in the ones. And just to double check, that doesn't make sense, right? Essentially, that is this matrix here. So this old one was in this location and we're going through these matrices. So it's basically gonna be this one cell has to be a zero. And that is indeed the case for the prefix sum. So then finally you return four because that's like all your stuff. And if we look, it should be four, right? Yeah. So that's kind of the idea. You need to know how to do the subarray sum equals K. If you haven't done that, do that first with the prefix sums to do a one D array then get the prefix sums of the array, just figure out like, okay, to get the prefix sums, I need to get this value, or not, sorry, not this value, this value plus this value minus this value because that's the overlap, plus the value in the actual matrix. And once I actually do a prefix sum, I just do every single combination of top and bottom row to get every single row matrix possible. And for the columns, I can just keep adding to the columns kind of like I did my 1D array. And to get the prefix sum, for a particular column, like let's say we want it here and in a, a particular row set, it's just gonna be this number here minus the thing above it up here. Um, yeah, so let's take a look at the code. So I'm not gonna like write the code uh, cause it's kind of, been, kind of been a long video already. So I'll quickly describe it. So basically we just get the rows and the columns. We get the prefix sums, just make the same, the same dimensions of a matrix as given to you. And so, like I said, you have a lot of these out of bounds cases. So you can either make a prefix sums with these exact same dimensions. And so for example, if I wanted um, like this prefix sum, remember we need three cells. We need the one above, the one to the left and the one up here. So basically I said, if any one of these cells is out of bounds, just make that value zero, which it is. So you can do it that way, or you can just add another, you can just like add another row and column. So if this is a three by three, you can make it four by four and make the zero row and zero column all zeros to handle that. Either one's fine. So essentially that's what you did. So, uh, so what I did is I want to add row minus one column to row column minus one, subtract this overlapping one, right? This diagonal one that's to, up um, to the left and above it. And then finally add the actual value in the matrix. 
then we just loop through every single possible value for top row, every single possible value for bottom row, create a count dictionary, set count zero equals to one because we want the count of the empty matrix to be one, and then we just loop through every single column in columns. And like I said, to get the prefix sum for a particular column, it's the prefix sum at your current value at the bottom minus the prefix sum at the cell above the top at the same column. And same kind of thing, if that cell is out of bounds, then make it zero, right? So all these like ifs were just like, if my row is out of bounds, then I'll make it zero. If my column is out of bounds, I'll make it zero and so on. This can all be handled just by adding another index. Then finally, you you take whatever value you get there and then you try to subtract the target and then however many times that appears is going to be all valid subarrays that are going to be summing up the target. And finally, you just um, add to the counts of your current sum and your return result. So I do think this will be um, a little bit more efficient if I did add another row because I have all these like if statements check, um, but either one's fine. So whatever you want. So this is like pretty good. And basically what, what happened here is we have, so our dimensions now are row times row times column, where if you look, these are 100 each. So n cubed, so this is basically n cubed, um, which, which will pass, but n to the fourth wouldn't. So I think n to the fourth would be brute force. Alternatively, instead of picking a top row and a bottom row, you can do the same thing for columns. So maybe like the most optimal solution would A, have another, if you want to code this up, would A, have another index for these? So you don't have to check for out of bounds and B. So I, I picked a, a top and bottom row for each of these, which is row squared times column. But what if like, imagine if you have like three rows and a hundred columns, then you'd want to have, um, so actually for three rows and a hundred columns, this would be good. But imagine if you have a hundred rows and three columns, then you'd want to have it the other way, right? Where you pick, you pick um, top and bottom column, and then you add it up this way. So you can do it this way. Um, I think this is just more intuitive to me right because you're just like going through the rows and you're adding up the column kind of like in a 1d array but you can do it the other way and i think the most like the most optimal solution would optimize for um whatever is smaller out of rows and columns um, but regardless so let's go through the um time and space complexity so like i said the time is going to be o of rows squared because this top and bottom are both in range rows and the columns is here and to make the prefix sums it's just rows times columns um, and the space is going to be of rows times columns, all right? Because we make a prefix sum here, and then our dictionary is only going to be um, O of n. So, so yeah, I think that is going to be all for this one. And so, if you have any questions, I think a pretty hard one. I think like subarray sum equals k. If you haven't done it before, is already not very easy. So going from that to this is like, I'd say a pretty pretty difficult problem. But yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I do think if you have done subarray sum equals K, this one's pretty reasonable. Even, even it's still on like the harder side of hard problems, but it's like not ridiculous. Where if you haven't done subarray sum equals K, you're, I would be shocked if you can do this without any hints. So yeah, um, any, regardless, uh, if you did like this uh, video, then please like it and please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.